Uh, it's Thanksgiving week, and you're going to feel that forming as we go, okay? Before we get there, I'd like to start with something funny. And uh, <clears throat> in Michigan, apparently, to be a hunter in Michigan, you got a problem. Because they've evolved to some kind of place where they understand when opening day is, and they take safe refuge in this. <laughs> that is a nice buck, by the way. <laughs> no, don't go up there. Because this got horns. See, it went through the window in the auditorium. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 He's like, we're not just checking out the choir. There's a nice choir area up here. <laughs> I have this to say newsflash if you're going to try that in New York, nine points. <laughs> Church is going to be holier than that. <laughs> Lighthouse, Wesleyan Church is not where you want to take refuge. <laughs> you are holy. Okay, all right, so that, that was our funny for the week. Now, and and, and uh, those of you who, uh, some of you had a really good opening day. By the way, um, uh, um, uh, John Moore, man, he, he got a buck. Anybody see that on, on, on Facebook? It's got two holes in its left horn. Like inside and outside, they are like, what in the world? It's just a cool buck. So congratulations, uh, those of you who got you know deer yesterday. I didn't see anything. I saw squirrels. So I was so distracted. Probably you know, probably ten points all around me, and all I saw was squirrels. Amen. All right. So congratulations, those of you who got bucks, Randy and uh, some other guys. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. Lord, I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Woo! Jesus, do something and light us up in this Thanksgiving week. Help us to understand what we're doing as we enter into it and be intentional as you are intentional. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right. As we look back, we're going to... Um, okay, I, I said this was an eight-week series. It's not my fault. God bumped it over to a nine-week series. Because I, I got it. Remember I said last week? Man, Jesus chose a, a what? A tax collector? And in the, in the last week, we're going to talk about who Jesus chooses. Woo! But that's going to be next week. Okay? I said it was going to be this week. Be disappointed with me. Give me disappointed. Okay. But... It, God lined it up too perfectly to, to use in our week of Thanksgiving. So I'm going to ride with what Jesus is doing. Is that okay? Amen? Amen. All right. So this is based on, uh, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to go back and have a flashback from last week a second. And then we're going to flash forward from where we left off last week. So my summation of last week is going to be a video. But let me just preface it with this. It is based on Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Jesus saw a man named Matthew. And he's sitting at the tax collecting booth, and he says, follow me. And Matthew got up, left everything he had, and followed Jesus. So, with no further ado, let's watch this portion, and then uh, we are going to talk about it and be transformed by it. Amen. Matthew, son of Alphaeus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes. You. Who? Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy's done? Do you know? Yes. What are you doing? What are you 
think you're done, guys? Let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're gonna throw it all away. That's Thanksgiving table, okay? Now I want us to look back a second and just do some homework, clean up from last week, right? You were made to be a difference maker. We're playing on that. We're going to drive it harder today as we wrap this thing up in Matthew's life. So let me look back and say, okay, before Christ, he was living this way and he hoarded this and he took advantage of them. But after Christ, he was completely he left everything to follow Jesus. Look back at your week. How am I doing? You were challenged that way. Is your life different? Visibly different. Notably different to your friends and family. Especially your family. They, they live with you. They know. Are you different or no? Were you humble yourself at, at home? Or, or are, you, are you that stubborn, ignorant individual that seems unchanged by the Spirit of God acting in your life? Well, that just got painful, didn't it? Yeah. But it's time. This is where we check up, amen? If not here, then where do you check up? Churches have just come to get feel, you know, good. It's nice to feel good, but I need checked. I want checked. I want God to say, hey, how are you doing in this area? And are you coming clean in? So how did I do this way, walking away from an argument with your spouse? Amen? Amen? How did you do at more quickly feeling the presence of the Spirit of God instead of following the serpent where he takes you? The serpent's going to take you to pride, to departure, to anger. But the Spirit of God says, love, empathy. How does she see this? How does he see this? And we can work all things out. Amen? Amen. Am I different? Am I visibly different? Have I left something behind? Is my language improved this week, amen? How is it done on Facebook? Facebook crowd, how are you doing? How is my language? Amen. I'm talking back to myself up here. This is incredible. <laughs> my wife's making sure lives okay, apparently. That is very distracting. Talk about a squirrel in the room. <laughs> My own squirrel's in the room. It's like little Silas when he sees himself in the mirror. He's like, oh, oh look at that cute kid. That was not cool. So anyway, back to, has my faith increased? Amen? Has, has my devotion to a brother or sister elevated? These are signs that, yes, uh, Jesus called me. And I'm experiencing a deeper, different walk. Amen? 
So do I do the changes just to fake change? No, that's not what we're talking about. Let the Spirit of God, and that's time with Him, literally change who you are and how you navigate. So, am I following Him or asking Him to follow me? There's another good question to see if I, which path am I on? Amen? Am I following Jesus? Or am I saying, hey, can you just follow me anywhere I go and just make it all good? There's a difference. This passage, literally, that we just watched, goes straight into a banquet, a Thanksgiving. Remember, Jesus says, yeah, hey, that's not going to be a problem not being invited anywhere, Matthew, because the party's in your house, man. <laughs> ah, I love it. It's in your place. <laughs> um, and some of you might have been like, hey, time out. Yeah, anybody get dumped on for Thanksgiving? You're like, hey, I thought it was somewhere else, but all of a sudden you realize 27 people are going to my place. <laughs> and you're like, I'm not ready. <laughs> so this week, when, when Jesus says, hey, it's at your place, what's the purpose of that? I, I, think, I think many of us, we, we realize Jesus calls us, like this Matthew tax collector dude. But we don't, I think we think we need a degree. We, we need to be a disciple of Jesus for like X number of years before we can share the truth with anybody else. Anybody feel that? Anybody told you're not good enough to share because you don't know the ins and outs of the Bible. Let me just tell you, as a pastor, I know a lot about the Bible, but I don't know everything. I get schooled on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. As I'm watching The Chosen, I have to go validate everything. And, and, and I'm, it, it's fun. It's, it's, so keep doing that, those things, amen? But you don't have to know everything because look at this, look at this passage. Here's, here's real life. This happened, and Jesus immediately, like tonight, knowing that we're going to go to the tax collector's house, and you're going to invite your friends, and they're going to be the other losers in town. Amen? Anybody surrounded with some considered losers in town? Did you invite them to your Thanksgiving? And I'm, not, I'm not making this all about Thanksgiving Day. And I'm not saying to invite everybody outside your family to Thanksgiving. That's, if, if God calls you to do that, send it. If he doesn't, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. Your family needs to know that they're special as well. I'm saying in a generic, specific way, Jesus just called him and then said, we're having the party at your house because I want to impact their lives as well. Matthew, he didn't know what he just got into, amen? He didn't, he didn't have a clue. Remember the first day you got saved? Well, wherever that was, maybe it was in a deer stand, maybe it was on a, in a, on, a, on a hillside, maybe it was in Bible school when you were seven, whatever it was, you didn't know everything in that moment, did you? No. But from that moment on, Jesus said, hey, invite your friends. While you're excited about what I just did for you, come and invite your friends, let's do it. Amen? You don't need to know everything. Tell your neighbor, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to know much at all. Look, nobody's sitting by Randy. Nobody's sitting by Randy telling him he doesn't need to know much. Okay, Randy. Hey, thank you for letting him know that. I didn't want him his pride to get too big. He was the only one in the place that knew everything. I love you, man. Well, I don't know what I'd do without Randy to, you know, enjoy part of these. Heard of these sermons, but so, so I hope we get the the, the, the notion. So we're, we're going to go right into the next clip, and as I, I I'm going to try to lay out this scene ahead of time so that you know some of the terms that are coming. We're going to go right into that scene of the I'll call it Thanksgiving dinner right after the calling of Matthew. Literally that night, we're going to show up at that scene in just a minute. But let me just preface it with this: Jesus was attracting a lot of unusual characters. Amen? <laughs> Look at your pew. Look at each other. That's unusual. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? Now, if the world's going to be honest with themselves, we are all extremely unusual. And God made us specifically different. Unusual. And it's good. And it's... All these unusual characters, but... Unusual takes a new height when you're like, hey, we're going to lead the world to the gospel of the good news of salvation, and you just called a really bad sinner, a tax collector who's taking advantage of all of 
the Jews and is living lavishly off the backs of people's pain and suffering and also selling us out to our oppressor, Rome. Okay? Do you see the problem? Do you see how it, it feels like, wait a minute, not him? And you saw it from uh, Simon. Whoa, whoa, at least I'm not a tax collector. How many of us have done that? I've, I've pulled that card before. And, and you want to get humbled fast? Pull that card. Somebody is about to drop the gauntlet on you. Just, so don't pull that card. Yeah, at least I'm not you know, a sinner like so-and-so, and God's going to humble you so fast. So just say it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because, look, quickly, Jesus says, get used to different, young man. It's not about you. It's about his need for a savior. And the same God who made you in your sinful state made Matthew and wants to rescue him. Amen? Amen. Now think of somebody that's coming to your Thanksgiving dinner and you're like, hmm, I don't know if Jesus has what it takes to save them. Don't look at me. Yeah, I'm not looking at you. <laughs> I don't know if Jesus has what it takes to rescue that person, that's the exact person God wants to flow through you. To let that person know you're important to God. I see. Amen? Yeah! I want you to get excited about Thanksgiving meal. Some of us are like, mm, I gotta put up with mm. Mm. I know, because I've been there, right? I gotta put up with that every day, right? Anyway. <laughs> That's fun. I love her. Hey, there, there's these, God's called us, each one of us, to get past what we think and get to what Jesus is doing. And we're going to get to his words in just a minute. Uh, it, it talks in this next book about Red Quarter folks. I want to just describe those folks. Uh, Red Quarter, think of a red light district we would call now. That's that's where, you know, bad stuff happens. The drugs and the, the, the inappropriate things that we want to talk about. Anyway, so Red Quarter stuff is um, maybe when, when, when the chief priests come in and they're like, you're eating with what? Referring probably to Mary of Magdala and some others who were in the room. That Jesus made what? Whole. Jesus made different. And Jesus made them to be difference makers in a moment. In a moment. How many of us know somebody? We know some of these types. Raise your hand. You know some. They're in your family. They're at work. Friends on Facebook. You know them. How many of us have said they're never going to get it? Forgive me, Lord. When I've given up on the people you died for. Forgive me, Lord. Because maybe it's a, a previous bar buddy. Maybe it's uh, you know somebody that... You, have you invited them? Have you reached out to them? Have you befriended them? So back in Jesus' day, the religious leaders became addicted to the law instead of addict, addicted to the heart of what the law was about. Amen? I want you to get off the law and get back to the heart. The heart of your thanksgiving. But we have to do it this way. And you have to sit there. And we can't talk about this. Can you get away from the law and just get back to loving who's ever at your table? Amen? Amen. Loving them with reckless abandon. So as we head into this, this Thanksgiving party right after this count, this is going to be the new video for you today. We, we head into this. Does your house look like this? At Thanksgiving, it's going to be a little bit loud, people talking. Here we go.
somehow I can't see that. Oh, <laughs> she's right. <laughs> I thought for certain he would trip and fall and I would be arrested. Oh, okay, you're not going to probably would happen, huh? Oh. <laughs> I thought for certain Leo was gone forever that day. It's never now. Always was. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want any grapes? Or do you eat a lot? Thank you. You know, Matthew, you're not behind iron bars. Quite handsome. I agree. <laughs> what is going on? Can I help you? We were just on the walk and we heard voices. And I thought it sounded like... But surely not. Yet it is you. Would you like to come in? We would never. Never be caught dead in a what? In a tax collector's house? Not only that, but we say... Do you know what she... And he... They are seem to be having troubles finding your words, man. <laughs> Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I must say, I am shocked. She is from the Red Quarter. Much of what is done there cannot even be spoken by my tongue or across my lips. It is so unholy. The mere mention of it would defile me. As like a person, Father. What <laughs> thing? And the others he works with. They betray our people for money, and they're not even sorry. If you're so offended, then leave. Let them speak, Andrew. They've never offered guilt sacrifices in the temple. What? The priest keeps the records. We check them. Tax collectors are not welcome at the temple. I'd like them better if they made the proper sacrifices. This is not about me. This is about what God wants. You're forgetting the scroll of Hosea. Hmm? Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy. More than sacrifice. There are righteous men on the lookout for you, and they are weighing every word you say. Is that a threat? Please let them know this, Yusuf. I have not come to all the righteous, but sinners. Is everything under control here? Uh, yes. We were just going on our way to it. That's pretty ordinary to you. Pretty ordinary. It is not the healthy who need a doctor. It's the sick. How many of us are going to go into our Thanksgiving thing with judgment in our hearts of who's coming? It's a family member who hasn't lived up to your standard. Right? Easy to do. Amen? What would Jesus do? Don't be the Pharisee in this story. Amen? Don't come in like, I would never. I would never be a part of that. I know. Some of the things our family has been through. Some of the choices they've made. I know. Some of those are hard to deal with. But to take the haughty approach is not going to build a bridge to their eternity. Amen? I desire mercy, not sacrifice. What does that mean? It means stop burning useless fires on my altar while you have unforgiveness against your brother and your heart. It means, hey, I desire for you to love sacrificially. Then to come and say, oh, I did my thing, I checked off Sunday. Stop smelling holy and looking holy and doing all the right things on Facebook while inside we're harboring enmity against a family member, a co-worker, an unvaxxed status or a vaxxed status. Forget it. 
And get think back to the things that matter. Get back to the party. Get back to the heart. Could we head into Thanksgiving saying, it's not the healthy you need a doctor, it's the sick that are at this table. You know, uh, in, in this room I got several family members that I don't actually really talk to ever on a Sunday or a Wednesday night. Why? Because I'm not here to relate with them. I'm here to be a part of who's sick among us. Let's talk things out. Somebody who's going through something. Amen? Do you, do you get the difference? And, and could you seek out somebody at your table who looks and, and, and they're, they're just behind? Could you put yourself in their shoes and way beyond Thursday and Friday and Saturday, whenever you do Thanksgiving, way beyond that, am I doing, am, am I entering into situations and being just like Jesus and being intentional about sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Can I be intentional? Amen? Amen. This, is, this is the call today of intentionality. And then Jesus um, just upends the Jewish teachers when he recalls Hosea 6.6. 6. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Amen? So if you spend extra time at all with individuals, could it be with the broken in the red corner? Could it be with somebody who's addicted to alcohol? Could it be with those who are left behind by many churches across the globe? Would it be with those? That's how Jesus operated. He went to those on the fringe, left out, castaways, and shared the power of the truth of the gospel. How many of us are literally um, rubbing shoulders with sinners and doing one of two things? Either we're missing the opportunity to minister to them because they are just flat out different than me. They believe different. They think different. They're a Democrat. I'm a Republican. We can't have a conversation. No, that's the enemy's line. Amen. Let it go. If anybody needs help, it might be somebody on the other side of your political aisle. Amen? Amen. Help us, Jesus, to be the cure, the answer. Lord, we need you. Or you could, you could respond this way as you're rubbing shoulders with sinners. Miss the opportunity at dinner because we simply don't receive them. We won't accept them. Because if we if we accept them, then we're going to accept the sin. No, you can accept the person and, and not have to put that sin on your hands. Amen? You can love the person. Not to love the sin. That's not what we're calling you to do. But would we love and accept? Jesus saw this tax collector in his booth and he loved him right where he was. He didn't clean up to take a bath. Matthew, son of a Hey, follow me. Me? Give them the opportunity, amen? amen? Give them the opportunity. If they say no, fine. Wipe the dust from your feet, move on. But so many of us haven't given them the opportunity to come and eat together. Because we've missed the opportunity of difference or we've missed the opportunity of acceptance. And finally, here's a, uh, uh, and there's so much we could pick out of that passage. I just don't have time to do it, as you can see. This last thing, I just want to, I want to parallel. Jesus, I, I didn't notice this until this week. Jesus, when he calls his tax collector Matthew, he's, he's calling Matthew inside the first three months of his ministry. All right, so he's 29, 30 years old. Jesus calls Matthew, tax collector. We're having a party at your house. Uh, it's going to be great. Invite your friends. I'm going to school some Pharisees. It's going to be awesome, all right? So, and, and it all went down. It was beautiful. And what happened? We, we, don't, we don't get the backstory of what happened to those friends' lives. And this is way up in Capernaum. And my wife's got a, got a map here for you. Up in Capernaum is where Jesus did most of his early ministry, and he kind of moved from north to south through his ministry of three and a half years. 
So he starts up in Capernaum with a, with a red axe, you see it? And he's going to end down here in Jericho before he goes into Jerusalem, spreads his arms like this, and dies for you and me. So just a, a day before he's going to ride a donkey into Jerusalem and die for you and me, he has another appointment with another tax collector. He's the chief tax collector of Jericho. And it goes this way, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And I, he invites himself, again, to another tax collector's house. Here it is. Jesus entered Jericho, and as he was passing through, a man there by the name Zacchaeus. All right, spell Zacchaeus without any help. One, two, three, go. Z A C. How many of you just cheated? You're in church. Let me get it. Amen. I should have put money on that one, but I didn't have time to do it. Zacchaeus. Tough name. Here we go. Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man. All right. He climbed up in a sycamore tree. So see what he wants to do. The Lord he wanted to see. Yeah, that's it. The Lord he wanted to see. Yeah, I got the scripture here in front of me. I need to look at it for help. He wanted to see Jesus, but because he was short, I'm not making any short jokes right now, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, and you know the story. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked at him, and I'm sure there was such love in his eyes as he looked at Zacchaeus. And he says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I'm going to invite myself over to dinner. I must stay at your house tonight. He doesn't just invite himself to dinner. He just invited himself like you're a hotel. And I'm staying at your house. And come down. I'm coming to your house today. It, you know, I think right there is built in the freedom for you to just go up to somebody and be like, Hey, how's it going? Can I come over today for dinner? That'd be nice. Amen? And then just share. And some of you try, Randy does it all the time. He, he's actually, and this isn't even a joke, he's actually good at knowing when your dinner hour is and just showing up. And, and whether your dinner hour is usually at 5, if he shows up at 7 that night, dinner was at 7. It's crazy. I don't know how he does it. So, but, but then he ministers to us. Amen. But how, how many of us are, are availing ourselves to ministry in that way? He invites himself over. And then, uh, so Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And the people saw this and they began to say, He has come to be a guest of sinners. Somebody's going to say, You've gone to be a guest of sinners. And I want you just to say, hallelujah. Amen? i do it again. And I'll do it tomorrow. Do it anyways. Amen? Be, what, what did Jesus say to, to Simon? Get used to different. Stop insulating yourself with all the people you know that, that are going to give you warm fuzzies. Right? And get the message of the gospel. I don't know how much more time we have on this planet. And the time is short. But have you noticed? The fields are ready for harvest. But nobody's out there really taking care of business. The church somehow is kind of ingrown, hanging out with ourselves. Hey, you! Pat your souls on that. You! And not enough. And that's okay. We need to be built up. There's times we got to be, this morning, refreshed. But get back out in the community and be the difference maker. Amen? But Zacchaeus stood up and he said, Lord, here and now I, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times that amount. Again, first, first guy, big life change. Second guy, big life change. Three and a half years in between, start of ministry, end of ministry. Here we are, bookends with tax collectors, hated by the Jews, hated by the people, used by Rome, and God does a complete and beautiful 
healing in their lives. And he said, this day salvation has come to this whole house. Because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man comes to seek and to save that who is lost. Amen? Amen. So Jesus will use every bit of your interests. If you're a Bills fan, Jesus will use that Bills fan that you are to minister to somebody who's a Bills fan and they're so far from Jesus and they're so lost that they smash tables after games. It's all that business. <laughs> but what do you got? You got an immediate in with somebody when, when you have a likeness. What does Jesus do? He uses all the likenesses. As he ministered through those three and a half years, he went into scenario after scenario and used likeness to build relationship. Don't let somebody judge you because you're a Bills fan and you use it for Jesus. But let them do it. Do you know that yesterday I'm at a wedding and God used the fact that I have a lowered car that's only this far off the ground to understand and immediately have a, a rapport with a young man that I never would have had that rapport immediately. It, I never would have had it had I not had a lowered car and coilovers and Godspeeds and no stuff about airbags and whatnot that he's into. God used what my oldest planted into my life to instantly have a rapport to now have a bridge to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's God. That's cool. Stop dismissing the things that you know how to do and that you're into and they're, they're your likenesses and use them. Amen? Use them in relationship to bring people to what? One final understanding. The difference is Jesus. The difference is salvation. This Anything Jesus ever did for healing was salvation. Any calling? Salvation. Anything he wants to do through you, through you and I, one thing. What is it? Salvation. salvation. And hey, PR, when are you going to stop talking about salvation? When I'm dead. <laughs> that's it. Because honestly, after I'm dead, that's when it all matters. But it all matters now. Jesus didn't come just to bring life average. He came to bring it to the full, abundantly. John 10.10. 10. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy but Jesus, I've come to bring life and life abundantly. That's not just after now. That's now. Why wouldn't you and I take every opportunity, every dinner that's coming up, maybe Thanksgiving even, and use it as an intentional opportunity? So questions as we go. What am I doing that brings Jesus to the forefront at Thanksgiving meal? Maybe you've never, maybe you got a, a ritual you do, however you do it. How am I being intentional about literally streaming the gospel of Jesus Christ into the prayer time for Thanksgiving? How's that? Be intentional about it. Amen? I'm challenged even recently in some of the other events we do that aren't in church. Am I, am I, am I seeing people like Jesus? Every single person, am I seeing them like Jesus sees them? Am I then responding in like kind? It changed what I did yesterday in so many ways. When I was thinking that way, because I'm preaching that way, and God was like, you probably got to practice what you're preaching here, amen? Right? It should change how you respond. In the home. Outside of the home. On Facebook. Please, in the name of Jesus, our Savior, change some of the things we're saying. There are opportunities, and then there are crashes where our words are actually the serpent from hell trying to strip people of the very gospel that we're saying we want to save them. Don't let our lives be an anomaly, right? Let them be a bright, shining beacon on a hill where we have some predictability. Amen? 
Amen? Yes. Some predictability that there is light. And why do they... Well, why do I see light and then extreme darkness out of the same thing? I don't understand. Don't give them an unreconcilable problem. Give them the beautiful, vibrant truth. And everything in between is truth. I haven't gone to meddling. Jesus goes straight at the heart of it when he's talking in this, in this group setting. And when the Pharisees comes in, and they're like, it's the law! You're breaking the law by being with that person and that person and that person. I couldn't even come into this room. I'm so holy. I know, it's funny. It's tragically funny. It, they don't even catch the humor. How far have they fallen when they're supposed to be light but they're darkness? Be the light. Then, as Jesus does, he didn't come to be served. He came to serve. Hospitality goes a long ways as being a Christian. So as we leave here this morning, there's no better time than now than to be the light, than to love, 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 accept people and bless them and bring them into the glorious light that you know. Amen. Bow your heads. Let us pray and rescue the children from the basement. Lord, we love you. We thank you that you are here. Thank you, Lord, that you just show us a beautiful template of how to love people. Love the darkest of people. People who have fallen off. It's not that they're dark. They've just fallen into dark ways. They've, they've been lured by the enemy into dark places. And Lord, we pray by your glorious light, you help us to illuminate their way. And help us to be a difference maker. Help us to love them recklessly. Help us to get our hands dirty in reaching them up and out and helping them come into the fullness of what your call is for their lives. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for coming, coming and, and, and choosing us and inviting us to a party, even that day. And then invite our sinner friends that they could see you do what you do. Lord, change us. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever new. Help me to be like you. So this Thanksgiving, we pray a supernatural intervention, a supernatural intentionality, and everywhere in between and thereafter, may we be intentional about the people we meet and see and you bring us into contact with, and you put in our hearts to reach out to, help us to love them so deeply and to be a difference maker. And then Jesus, at the end of the day, it's all you. It's all you. Changing their life, healing their hearts. But Lord, we transition now from it's all about me being chosen to me being a part of your plan of choosing others. And you're sending us out as disciples. You're sending us out as apostles. You're sending us out to reap. We love you and we need you. Go before us, around us, and through us. And may this be the most awesome Thanksgiving week we have ever, ever had. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen.